Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today, I'm not at the door of my house, but I'm at the door of my van build camper van, which I made to go out and extend my reach at Nature at Your Door and go visit new habitats. And the habitat I'm gonna visit today are the Pine Barrens. Right now, I'm in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, on near almost the tip of this unique peninsula that has an amazing history going back possibly even to Norse and Viking visitors. But it was a very active place for fishing, the lumber industry, shipbuilding during the 1700s into the 1800s, and it continues to have a rich maritime history. The Pine Barrens are a unique ecological habitat that are found in various places that are all characterized by nutrient-poor, sandy, acidic soils. They're dominated and controlled by uh, infrequent fires, and these trees can rebound quickly after a fire, and that helps maintain this unique habitat. Today, I'm gonna show you five interesting features of the Pine Barrens, so you'll have a greater appreciation for this really unique ecological habitat. So now I'm gonna just walk out of this campground and right into the Pine Barrens that surround us. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's to make this invasive. It's like dog Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Oh produce seed pollen, and it's So I'm just a few steps out of the campground and, and I'm here in this Pine Barren wilderness. I think it's just so unique and so special. The ground is covered with grasses and a variety of, of shrubs including some straggling uh, blueberry, bayberry, huckleberry, and dewberry. Some scrub oaks, some white oaks, but it's just the landscape is completely dominated by these pitch pines. I think it's unique in that you can just walk everywhere and you're not bound by trails and there's a number of different game trails through here. You can see the ground has got a lot of lichens in it. And it's just a really, really unique habitat. So the first feature of these pine barrens I want you to know is to be able to identify this tree, the pitch pine. So let's take a closer look at this tree that dominates this landscape. And that tree is here behind me, and it's called the pitch pine. Its scientific name is Pinus rigida. Pinus rigida is characterized by three needles in a bundle. If you look at one of these branches and pull off a bundle of needles, you can see that the needles are in threes. And that's one of the characteristics of this particular pine tree. The bark of this tree is very scaly, as you can see here, very rough texture and it appears broken in plates. And it can have a kind of reddish brown to almost a purplish tinge to it. And as you can see in these trees behind me, they are really scraggly. I don't know if I've ever seen such scraggly trees. And they grow up in all in many very, very twisted shapes. Pine Barrens fact number two. This tree was very important in the discovery of America and in colonial times. Cape Cod area is featured by the first settlement by the Pilgrims, so it really dates back pretty far. This tree was also called torch pine by the colonists because they could cut a piece of tree or a branch that had a big knot on it and light that knot and it would burn like a torch. Pitch pines have very, very resinous wood. Pitch pine was also called candlewood because you could cut the pitch pine into small pieces 
split it. As you had a fire on your hearth, you could throw a piece of candlewood into your fire and it would burn very, very brightly and light your room. So you always kept some candlewood near your fire to light your room at night. As the resources of the Americas were recognized by Europe, people came to take advantage of them. Cape Cod had a rich fishing industry. So that needed people to do the fishing. They needed boats. They needed housing for the people. People needed to keep warm in the winter. Another important use of the pitch pine historically, well, was for pitch. This wood is very rich in resins and a crude distillation of the wood made turpentine, tar, and pitch. Pitch was invaluable historically in shipping because the pitch was used to make the ships waterproof, it was put on the outside, it was put in joints, it was used to patch the hull. This pitch, this tar was invaluable to keeping the ships afloat. It was also used on the fixed rigging. The fixed rigging was covered in this tar or pitch so that it wouldn't rot. Fascinating feature number three. What plants and animals live in this uh, pitch pine, this pine barren community? Let's walk around and take a look. One of the other substory trees you're gonna find here are these bare oaks, or sometimes known as scrub oaks, that'll grow in this uh, particular understory. I can't help but to notice all oh, the rich lichens that are here covering the forest floor. It's really a stunning, stunning array of lichens that grow all over through this particular forest, as well as up on the trees. And there's many, many different species of this lichen here. And it's just so cool to see this luxuriant lichen growth. This species, I believe, is also known as reindeer moss, and it's the kind of lichen that reindeer will eat in Arctic tundra. In areas where there's more light, there's a rich diversity of bayberry, dewberry, huckleberries, blueberries. Many bird species abound here with a really great diversity. Many will nest in this uh, habitat that the trees provide them. And one of the common species of snakes here, which I would love to find, is the eastern hognose snake. But I haven't been able to find one here today as yet. I was really excited to see that here in the second week of July, I'm at the peak flowering time of this particular flower called Pipsisawa. Pipsisawa is the Cree name for the plant and the word means breaks into small pieces and is a very unique flower with one, two, three, four, five petals. Pipsisawa has many common names. It's also known as prince's pine. It's also called wax flower because of the waxy petals that it has and bitter wintergreen. The scientific name, Chymophilia umbulata, comes from the Greek, which means winter weather. And it's a reference to the fact that this plant is green throughout the winter time. Pipsisawa leaves were also used in drinks and teas, as well as candies and a flavoring for sodas. Fascinating feature number four. While this habitat and this community uh, dominated by these pitch pines is persistent and it's quick to recover after fire. It's not the original community here on the Cape Cod. The original community here was an eastern deciduous forest. And when the first colonists, maybe perhaps the pilgrims that arrived here and walked through these forests, they didn't see pine barrens like this. It was dominated by virgin forests with oak trees that were probably two and 300 years old. As the colonists arrived and 
Europeans discovered the resources that were here. And one of the big resources was a fish industry. So settlers began to arrive, so they started to build houses to use the wood. They started to cut down the forest to heat their houses. They cut down the forests and oak trees to build ships. They used it a lot to make salt by boiling water because they needed the salt to salt the fish. So all of this kind of goes back to the fish industry. Well, as those trees were cut down, they tried farming the soil. But the soil was very nutrient poor. And when you took away the tree cover, it started to erode a lot and resulting in sand dunes. It's not too far different than what's happening in some of the rainforests where farmers are burning down the rainforests in nutrient poor areas to put all the nutrients of those trees in the ground. They farm it for a year or two and then the soil's depleted of nutrients and it becomes uh, pretty useless. So these pine barrens here on Cape Cod were artificially created by humans. After a fire burns in this area, these pitch pines are quick to recover and they grow uh, explosively very thick, wide, dense, branching branches across the ground and the surface that crowds out any other deciduous trees that might try to become established. So they self-perpetuate themselves. Eventually, over time, succession will return, soil formation will begin to develop in areas that are protected, and the original oak and hickory and maple forest will probably return. But we're talking here because of the harsh environment on a scale of maybe hundreds of years, maybe even a thousand years for that to recover. Fascinating pine barren fact number five. Why are these trees so twisty and gnarly? And why are the trees seem to be shorter as you move from the lower cape, which is much, much broader, to this very narrow section of the cape up here? Well, these pine trees are deceiving because they don't look very old, but some of them may be very, very old. The growth rate here is slowed. They are exposed to winds and storms and rain and harsh, harsh winters. So these things are also a natural way of pruning. Sand spray, salt spray is limits this growth. So for now, it's to me just this really fascinating ecological habitat, these pine barrens. So now it remains this relatively stable ecological uh, habitat. Nutrient poor, acidic, sandy soils that dry very quickly, exposed to harsh winters, wind and rain, and it's just such a cool unique habitat. It's fascinating to walk through here. It's so peaceful in its own way with the lichens and this shrubby understory and the beach grasses that profound here. This is such a unique habitat. There's another great expanse of pine barrens like this in New Jersey that has some of the very same characteristic features. So for now, I'm just going to really enjoy this habitat. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature in Your Backyard and I gave you a little bit of appreciation for the pine barrens and understanding what they really are. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and I love hearing from my viewers. Leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, unless I'm out in the woods and I do go out camping a lot and stuff, but usually I'll answer in 24 hours. Love hearing from y'all. Hope to see you in my next episode. Thanks for watching. Nature at your door.